Hi and welcome to this tutorial. Today we're going to have a look at um, using the tune setting, uh, one of the tune shader settings in 3D Code and use it to create this um, character. Uh, it's just one of the de uh, default characters inside of 3D Code. Uh, we'll be using uh, 3D Code 4.804 to do this little demonstration. So if you've not got the latest copy, uh, go and download it. And inside there, you'll find all the tune shader settings, etc. So let's get started. First thing to do is open up the voxel sculpting workspace. And from the menu, select this figure here. Once that opens up, just zoom in a little bit closer and by default it's given this kind of tan colored shader. What you'll need to do is open up the cartoon shader here, shaders, and we are looking for the Toon 6 shader. So this is um, a, a default shader that comes with um, 3D code and you can use this one. You can use any one actually that you, that you want to but if you want to follow along exactly with what I'm doing I, I, I use the um, Tune 6. So what I've done here is I've just created my own little folder called Cartoon In and here is Tune 6. So if I press that one you can see it just changes the shader with this sort of um, cell shaded look. If I go back to the Tune 6 and click Tune 6, you can see it's exactly the same. Just for organization purposes, I like to just put the things into a folder of their own. It makes it much easier to uh, access. Okay, so with that done, what I'll do next is duplicate this layer. So the male layer here, go down to your tab here and hit this little icon called duplicate which gives you a copy in the Vox tree. Don't change the position of the copy at all even though these uh, this um, comes up here. Try not to move it. It's important that it stays in exactly the same position in space. To make things easier, what I'll do is I'll just rename this layer Outline and I will change it from a voxel object to a surface object by clicking this small v. So now it's a surface object and I can do the same for this original one as well. Once that's done right click on the outline layer and what we're going to do is we're going to flip the normals of the outline layer by coming down here to flip flip normals now if this was still in voxel mode flip normals wouldn't be accessible so that's why we have to change it to surface mode so it, it appears that nothing's actually happened by that but if i turn the original layer off you can see that the normals of this have been flipped, so everything's in reverse. We'll leave that layer turned off just for now and we'll remain on the outline layer. And what I'll do now is change the shader for the outline layer to this black shader here. So if I click on this, and I'll just open up its properties so you can see how it's the, the settings for it by just going to edit current object shader settings you can see nothing is checked down here the color is just simply a black color the metalness is set to 5 you can enter that if you want to 1 is, is fine but I've just cranked that right the way up to 5 uh, no gloss and the opacity uh, is left at 1 as well so that's all it is. It's, there's nothing special about this. So with that now created this 
this uh, black shader on there, what I've got is if I turn this one back on, this one now is obviously still showing through, but behind it is my outline. So what we need to do now is make this outline appear just on the edges. And we do that by right clicking on this layer and then saying extrude. And we're given a dialog box. Now if I leave it at the defaults and just say OK, you see that nothing happens. The reason for that is it's shrunk it the wrong way. So it's extruded it inwards, which and it becomes this really thin shape. So let's just undo that. So we're back to normal. And this time I'll right click, click extrude, and just put a negative value in there. And click OK. And now it grows outwards. So now you can see I've got an outline on the character. We get some strange artifacting going on, but we also get some really nice lines going on here as well. So this is just a uh, byproduct of, of the processes that we've done. It's it's you know it's it's nowhere near it's no by no means perfect, but you know you can get some good results. It really depends what what your end result is going to be. So from this point, let's change the background here, and all we'll do for that is just go to the camera settings here, background, and I'll choose a background image, and I've got different ones here and I'm just going to choose this white which is just a, a white uh, a white image so we can see our outline a little bit clearer the next stage is to if you hit your spacebar and select your move tool and what we'll do is we'll create some line uh, weight on, on this outline now so with your brush here you can see I've got my brush in the middle. I'm going to make it quite a large brush by right clicking and expanding. You can also just move the size of the brush or expand the size of the brush here. And with the outline selected, then I'll just push in. So where I want a thinner line, I'll just push that in. Where I want it thicker, I'll pull that out. Something like that. Now this is dependent really on the view that you have that you want to create your image on. So if I turn this around, for example, you may not get the results that you had in this view when you start to pull and push the outline in and out. But it gets you into a good starting point at the very least. So we can carry on tweaking this and, and varying the line weight as much as we like. Okay. So if I go over to the render room here, you'll see I've got my render, real-time render turned on. I'll just turn that off for a second. And one of the things that you may want to do, if you're not happy with the shading on this, is just turn up the exposure and hit real time render again. Whoops. Let me just jump out of the render room and back again in again and do that one more time. And there you go. So it removes a lot of the shading because the exposure is, is quite high. Um, you can go as high as you like, I, depending on how much of that you, you want. The higher that value is, the less of the shading you'll see on, on the outside. But you do get to see the, the weighting that we just put onto the outline quite clearly now. So if we just drop that back down to 150, with the real-time render, you get a little bit of nice as well obviously once we render this out 
So let's turn that off and jump back into the sculpt room. So the next stage of this is to create some more lines over the top. So we want to do some internal. Obviously with our outline, all we're really affecting is the outline with the exception of these, uh, these artifacts here. And on the back you can see quite clearly. So let's change the internal lines here. To do that, we'll select a new layer and we'll call this one Line Art. And quite simply, we'll use the same shader that we used before, the black shader. Only this time we'll change the tool from the Move tool to the Snake tool. Now when you click the snake tool, you'll get this dialog that comes up. I typically check the embed ends and choose the muscle one profile. By default, you'll probably have straight selected. So just come down to the list where it says muscle one. You can choose any one you like to see what different results. And I'll also use a smoothing speed of around 1.1 five, something around that area. When you do this as well, go up to your E panel here and choose this this, this um, stroke here, which is a thinner tapered stroke. You can use any one that you like. I just typically use the thinnest of them because I want my line art internally to be thinner than the outline. So let's zoom in here closer. I can change this to surface mode again. And an important step here is to increase the resolution of this. Let me just jump back out. At the moment I've got like 20, 000, the resolution or the required poly count is 20,000 at this time. So what I, what I tend to do is just increase the resolution quite high on this because I want a nice tight line on here. So I'll just increase it by four and then jump back to surface mode. And what I can do is just to start because this will stick to the side of the face here and you can see the line that it makes. So all I need to do is change it from that default to the black. And now I've got my black line. You can see it's quite thick, not quite what I'm after. So I'll reduce the line the width of my brush here. Try again. It's better. And again, once I'm started to brush on here, you can see that, okay, it looks fine in this view. But once I rotate it round, you know, it might not look quite as, as good. So always just rotate around and check. You can see here at this angle, for example, we see in the chest, the inside of the chest. So if it's this is the required angle that you need, you will have to go back to the outline layer, use the move tool, increase the brush, brush size and just pull that in. like so. You can also jump back onto the line art layer here. Let's zoom into the stroke that we made. We'll reduce this down a little bit. And obviously we can move this stroke that we've made independently because it's on a separate layer. So let's just delete the contents of that layer which will remove this stroke. And I'll hit S on the keyboard and enable symmetry in the X axis. You can see the symmetry plane there is defined by that pinkish square. For now, I'll just remove the symmetry plane so it's not visible, because it's a little bit distracting. So with the same tool selected, my shader is now black. I'll reduce the pen size, and now I will work in symmetry. A little bit bigger. Oops, forgot to swap the tool over to the snake tool. Let's 
So now I'm drawing on the surface and we can start to draw our characters in a cartoony style. So we're now outlining in symmetry and we can start to make our designs costume or whatever we need. And those lines are all editable using the move tool. If we need to just tweak them. Like so. So back into the render room. Let's say we'll call this one done. We can hit a real time render just to check everything's okay. If we're not happy with the exposure, we can, or the amount of shading, we can crank that up and get more of the line, less of the shade. And we've got ourselves there quite a nice little 3D model with um, a 2D tune outline. Okay, that's it. Thanks very much, and I hope you found this useful.